dear learners in this lesson we'll learn about the challenges to indian democracy let me tell you very briefly the objectives of this lesson and the objectives are meaning of democracy in varied context that is political social individual or self and indicate the essential conditions of democracy major challenges to indian democracy as potential opportunities to make it successful corrective measures for improving the indian democratic system and the last objective is the role of citizens in a democracy based on experiences of life let us begin with understanding the meaning of democracy and the condition that are essential for its successful functioning when we are asked to define democracy we generally quote a very popular definition democracy is a government of the people for the people and by the people we all know that indian constitution is the largest constitution in the world and has been effectively functional and been able to adapt itself to the changing situations free and fair periodic elections for all political offices legislative and executive have been taking place regularly after independence india immediately adopted a system which reflected all the principles of developed democratic system but its social system remained by and large traditional the gap is often described as the mismatch between political democracy and socio economic democracy which has led to a number of challenges some of these challenges at times also indicate possible threats to indian democracy let us discuss some of the major challenges which has been observed while functioning of democracy the first and foremost is the illiteracy now illiteracy among people was a matter of grave concern for successful functioning of democracy in india on the eve of independence and it is still continues to be a major challenge the level of education of citizens is key to both the successful functioning of democracy and perhaps the level of education of citizens is key to both the successful functioning of the country perhaps more importantly it is an essential condition for human dignity literacy is necessary not simply for enabling citizens to participate in elections and exercise their rights to vote effectively it has other more important implications literacy enables citizens to be aware of various issues problems demands and interest in the country be conscious of the principles of liberty and equality of all and ensure that the representatives elected by them truly represent all the interest in the society universal literacy is therefore a must for the successful functioning of indian democracy now although according to 2011 census the literacy rate has risen to 74.4% the female literacy rate is still 65.46% this means that over 1/4 of the country's population is still illiterate while among women nearly 1 out of 3 is still illiterate now the second most important challenge is poverty and learners you will be agree that it is the root cause of all kind of deprivation and inequalities it is the state of denial of opportunities to people to lead a healthy and fulfilling life of course india inherited poverty from long exploitative british colonial rule but it continues to be one of the greatest problem or we can say gravest problem even now a considerable proportion of indian population lives below poverty line the poverty line means an income level below which human beings cannot provide for their basic necessities of food much less for clothes and shelter the governmental definition of poverty line which measures the extent of poverty is based on the minimum or we can say amount of income required to purchase a barest minimum desirable food having nutritional standard of caloric intake by a person 
Now, the third one is the third challenge is gender discrimination and we observe the discrimination against females in every walk of life and you also must have had such experiences of lack of gender equality in our society and polity. But we know that gender equality is one of the basic principles of democracy. The constitution of India enjoins upon the state to ensure that men and women are treated as equal as there is no discrimination against women. Fundamental rights and fundamental duties as well as the directive principles of state policy makes this intensus or intensius very clear. The another most important challenges to the democracy is the casteism, communalism and religious fundamentalism. The challenges of casteism, communalism and religious fundamentalism are major threats to Indian polity and they weaken the functioning and stability of democratic system. The caste system which presumably originated in the division of labor in the ancient society has become a more or less rigid group classification based on birth. Learner you will agree that the most detrimental and inhuman aspects of the caste system is the practice of untouchability which is continuing in spite of the constitutional ban imposed on it. Casteism has played a negative role even in the democratic political processes. In fact, casteism has become notorious as a strategy of exploitation of caste consciousness for narrow political gain. The caste system acts against the roots of democracy. Now, communalism if we see communalism and religious fundamentalism have acquired a very dangerous form and if we see communalism and religious fundamentalism it acquired a very dangerous form and alarming proportion in India. They disturb or disrupt the pattern of coexistence in our multi-religious society, communalism as an effort to India's nationalist identity and a tragic setback to its evolving secular culture. It is subversive of our democratic political stability and destroyer of our glorious heritage of humanism and composite culture. As a matter of fact, communalism is an ideology of political allegiance to a religious community as a primary group and its base. It uses one religious community against other communities and perceives other religious community as its enemies. It is opposed to secular or secularism and even humanism. The another very most important uh, challenges to Indian democracy is regionalism. Indian democracy has also been struggling with regionalism which is primarily an outcome of regional disparities and imbalances in development. We all know that India is a plural country with diversities of religions, languages, communities, tribes and cultures. A number of cultural and linguistic groups are concentrated here in certain territorial segments. Although development process in the country has been aimed at growth and development of all regions, the regional disparities and imbalances in terms of differences in per capita income, literacy rate, state of health and educational structure or infrastructure and services, population, situations and levels of industrial and agricultural development continue to exist. Existence and continuation of regional inequalities both among state and within a state created a feeling of neglect, deprivation and discrimination. This situation has been given rise to regionalism manifested in demands for creation of new states, autonomy or more power to states or even separation from the country. It is true that regionalism and sub-regionalism are unavoidable in a vast and plural country like India. Now, the another most important which always we talk of or we listen from radio or television that corruption. Corruption in public life has been a major concern in India. In fact, corruption is rampant in all walks of life. 
be it land and property, health, education, commerce and industry, agriculture, uh, transport, police, armed force, even religious institution or so called places of spiritual pursuits. Corruption is present in the judicial system in India as well. According to Transparency International, the main reason for judicial corruption in India are delays in the disposal of cases, shortage of judges and complex procedures, all of which are exacerbated by a preponderances of new laws. Now, it is uh, become very clear learners that Indian democracy and society are facing certain serious challenges and you will definitely agree that there is a need to take corrective measures to offset the impact of these negative developments. Now, it is not that we were completely unaware of these problems on the eve of independence. In fact, the leadership of the freedom movement and especially the uh, framers of the Indian constitution uh, were very much concerned with these issues. They made a number of constitutional provisions to take care of these concerns. Various governments also have been taking measures to respond to many of these, but there is a lot to be done. The government, the political parties and other political and social organizations uh, must play their roles or we can say the respective roles in the fight against these challenges. Now, we will understand some of the corrective measures also that are necessary for the smooth functioning of the democracy. The first corrective measure is universal literacy, which means education for all. The significance and necessity of education for efficient functioning of democracy was appreciated by the framers of the Indian constitution, which is why free and compulsory education to all children up to the age 14 is a constitutional commitment in India. Various governments at national and state level have been making efforts to attain this education 1986. Various governments at national and state level have been making efforts to attain this goal as a follow up of the national policy on education 1986, a national literacy mission was set up in 1988 to plan and implement programs for the removal of illiteracy. The Sarva Siksha Avyan is a flexi program for universalization of elementary education for children between 6 to 14 years of age. Beside Parliament of India in 2009 passed Right to Education Act through which education has become a fundamental right for all children of age group 6 to 14 years. Now, it is a fundamental right. Another corrective measure is poverty elevations. From the 1970s, a number of programs have been implemented for elevation of poverty. These programs fall into two categories. The first one is there are programs to lift beneficiaries by providing them with productive assets or skills or both so that they can employ themselves usefully and earn greater income. The second one is programs are also being implemented to provide temporary wage employment for the poor and the landless. The Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act that is called Manrega is being implemented to enhance the livelihood security of people in rural areas by granting 100 days of wage employment in a financial year to a rural household whose adult members volunteer to do unskilled manual work. The another most important corrective measure is elimination of gender discrimination. It is now being recognized that the goals of democracy of the people, for the people and by the people cannot be fully fulfilled if the female population are not included in all ways in the processes of socio-economic and political development. That is why besides constitutional provisions, several laws have been enacted, policies have been made and implemented and in the institutional reforms have been carried out for the development of women. The 73rd and 74th amendment of Indian constitution in 1993 are the milestone in processes of political empowerment of women. These amendments have reserved one third of the seats in the Panchayati Raj institutions, 
municipalities and municipal corporations. Another significant development has been the adoption of the national policy for empowerment of women in 2001. The overreaching goal of which is to bring about the advancement, development and empowerment of women, but a lot needs to be done to attain this goal. The another corrective measure is removal of regional imbalances. Redressing regional imbalances has indeed been a vital objective of the planning process in India. Efforts are on to reduce regional disparities. Besides the states, specific efforts for reducing intra-state regional disparities a number of centrally sponsored programs have been in operation for the last two or three decades for taking care of specific aspects of backwardness of such regions. Learners, are you aware of any such programs being implemented in your area? Some of the major programs are 1. The Tribal Development Program, 2nd the Hill Area Development Program, 3rd one the Border Area Development Program, 4th one is the Western Ghat Development Program, 5th one the Drought Prone Area Program and the last 6th one is the Desert Development Program. For the development of Northeast state, a certain percentage is earmarked for the Northeast from the budget for each developmental scheme or program. While the development of depressed region is a national responsibility, the solution mainly rests with the local leadership. Unless the local leadership, political bureaucratic and intellectual resolve to usair in development based on sharing the gains on egalitarian basis with the masses result will be hard to come by. Resources are not the real constraint, it is the way resources are spent. Now the administrative and judicial reforms is also one of the important corrective measure we can see. The uh, corrective measure primarily depends on the efficient functioning of administration and independence and righteousness of the judicial system. But on both counts a lot needs to be done. The performance of public administration in India has come under close scrutiny in the last few years. Rampant corruption, inefficiencies, wastages and irresponsiveness to the needs of citizens are some of the commonly acknowledged problem afflicting the administration. No doubt the Indian judiciary has demonstrated its independence on many occasions, but there are serious problems and most critical of them being slow disposal of cases leading to delays as well as accumulation of backlog and very low rate of prosecution in criminal cases. Administrative reforms have been a continuous agenda even since independence and a number of commissions and committees have been set up. But bureaucratic re reluctance to change has prevented the reforms to take place in full measure. The recommendations of various commissions and committees focuses around the need. What they focus is? To make administration accountable and citizen friendly, to build its capacity for quality governance, to orient administration for promoting people's participation, decentralization and devaluation of powers to make administrative decision making process transparent, to improve the performance and integrity of the public services and the last to reinforce ethics in administration and to inculcate readiness for e-governance. Now judicial reform also has been a critical concern since long. Various recommendations have been made on many occasions. The major issues that need consideration in this regard are simplification of rules and procedures, repealing out dated laws, increase in the judge population ratio, time bound filling of vacant post in judiciary, transparency in appointment, promotion and transfer of judges, judicial accountability and transparency of courts proceedings. The another point is sustainable development which always we talk of and this deals with the economic, social and environment. The Indian democracy can adequately respond to all the challenges when it moves forward on the path of sustainable development. 
a model of development without taking into account the basic needs of millions today as well as in the future cannot be conducive for survival of democracy. Development has to be human centric and directed towards improvement of quality of life of all the people. It has to be focused on removal of poverty, ignorance, discrimination, disease and unemployment. The development process has to aim at sustained economic, social and environmental development. Now, as a citizen of India, do we really appreciate the role of a citizen in a democracy? And why is this role so important? Learner, generally it is believed that the government rules over people who have to respect the authority and obey it, they are there to be governed. But do not you think that this is not so in a democracy. The people who are citizen in a democratic system like India cannot and ought not remain passive and treat themselves as governed. In fact, a democracy can be successful and vibrant only when citizens imbibe and reflect in their mindset, thinking and behavior the basic values like equality, freedom, secularism, social justice, accountability and respect for all. They have to appreciate the opportunities for their desired role and play proactive roles to actualize the goals of democracy. If democracy is to work, citizens must not only participate and exercise their rights. In fact, the corrective measures to meet the challenges faced by Indian democracy, they must respect the law and reject violence. Every citizen must respect the rights of his or her fellow citizen and their dignity as human being. No one should denounce a political opponent as evil just because they have different views. People should question the decision of the government but not reject the government's authority. Every group has the right to practice its culture and to have some control over its own affairs. But each group should accept that it is a part of a plural society and democratic state. When you express your opinion, you should always listen to the view of other people, even people you disagree with. Everyone has a right to be heard. When you make demands, you should understand that in a democracy, it is impossible for everyone to achieve everything they want. Democracy requires mutual cooperation, groups with different interests, and opinion must be willing to sit down with one another and negotiation. If one group is always excluded and fails to be heard, it may turn against democracy in anger and frustration. Everyone who is willing to participate peacefully and respect the rights of others should have some say in the way the country is governed. Now, democracy is a form of government in which supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly through a system of representation usually involving periodic free elections. But it is defined not only in the political context, but also in social context or even in relation to self. A system can be termed as a genuine and comprehensive democracy, a successfully functioning democracy only when it fulfills certain political, social and economic conditions. Indian democracy over the years has been able to articulate many of these essential conditions. But it is confronting a number of challenges that at time bring out the distortion which have crept in and also indicate the possible threats to its future. Illiteracy, social and economic inequality, poverty, gender discrimination, casteism, communalism and religious fundamentalism, regionalism, corruption, criminalization, political violence and militancy are major challenges that need to be addressed. The corrective measures that are needed to meet the challenges to Indian democracy are focused around the issue and concerns like universal literacy, that is education for all, poverty elevation, elimination of gender discrimination, removal of regional imbalances, administrative and judicial reforms and sustained economic 
social and environmental development. However, Indian democracy can be successful and vibrant only when its citizen imbibe and reflect in their behavior. The basic democratic values like equality, freedom, social justice, accountability and respect for all, their mindset, thinking and behavior are expected to be in tune with the essential condition of democracy. They have to appreciate the opportunities for their desired role like participation, making the system accountable and fulfilling obligations and playing proactive roles to actualize the goals of democracy.